Manchester City are pressing for their fourth Premier League title. Their talisman, the heartbeat of the team, is Kevin De Bruyne, a fantastic player who is third on the list of most Premier League assists. He is a pure technician and can do many things with the ball that many only wish or dream of. He's got the ability to pick a pass, cross and strike the ball over distance and he can do it with both feet. But it's not just that and the assists, he can also score a goal. Demonstrating probably the finest technique in the Premier League. It just seems to be that Kevin De Bruyne has the technique on both feet to do amazing things and he does it consistently as well. But one area that really stands out is when he strikes the ball, when he shoots from distance. So we're gonna have a look at what De Bruyne does and we can break down his shooting technique on the shoelaces into three steps. These three steps can help you strike cleaner with more power, more accuracy, and also more control. And having control when shooting with power is vitally important. And De Bruyne is the absolute master of this. We have three different areas and those areas are what we're gonna be focusing on. And firstly, that first area is his control of his body and his chest. You wanna make sure that when you strike the ball in your laces, you have your body weights forward and central. This allows you to control the shot and keep the ball low. Lots of players sometimes lean back and that causes the ball to go high and wide. You want your power going through the ball. This body weight going forwards prevents you leaning too much to the side, which would lose balance and lack stability when you go to strike it which can then lead to a potentially wayward shot that goes high and wide and out of control, which you've seen probably many times before. So you've got to keep focusing on that being the first starting point, the central foundation to developing control. But then secondly, we want to make sure we can get our knee over the ball. If you get the knee over the ball when you go to strike it, you're going to actually start to generate more power. Your body weight is forwards, which gives you control and prevents you from losing balance while you have momentum in moving forwards to strike the ball. But you've got to focus on generating more power from the hamstrings and quadriceps. And this can happen from getting your knee over the ball. It allows you to lift your heel high and then swing down onto the ball and strike through with power. Control and power are the two vital things here. But to add to it, we want the third thing, which is lock the ankle. If you don't lock the ankle, you're going to slightly turn your foot inwards, leading to you dragging the shot or scuffing it on the inside of the boot. What you need to do is point the toes and lock the ankle. Make it strong so as you go to strike through the ball, you can generate power, your foot's not, go, not going to wobble too much and you can strike firmly on your shoelaces. It gives you the chance to then shoot from distance when you're anywhere within the width of the area. But you've got to make sure you focus on technique and De Bruyne is incredible in these areas of the pitch. He can play in any of these five forward positions and he can be a threat because he has great technique on the ball and he is really focused constantly on controlling the body, which so many players forget. It's not all about power, it's about controlling the body, thinking about your technique, so that you can go out there and influence the game by controlling that pass, shot or cross. It's amazing how many times you'll see De Bruyne do this consistently. But to do this, he needs to have time and space on the ball. Something that De Bruyne does so frequently is make a quick darting run forwards. This causes the defensive player to retreat and follow that run. And as they do that and put that effort into track back, De Bruyne does something very clever. He suddenly stops and drops off into the space. The defensive player carries on with their run and De Bruyne has created a gap of five to 10 yards to get on the ball and then make an effect. It gives him the chance to receive the ball in space where he can then showcase and demonstrate that technical ability. Without the time and space, it's harder to use and showcase that technical ability on the ball. But De Bruyne is also really clever when the ball goes out wide into the wide areas of the pitch. If the wide player has the ball, you can sometimes see De Bruyne drift across to go and support, where he can again get time and space in an area of the pitch where he can be a threat, delivering crosses in between centre back and goalkeeper for the attacker like Haaland to get onto. But again, it's all about control and technique. And this is crucial when he looks to finish. If another teammate creates a 2v1 situation in that wide area of the pitch, De Bruyne doesn't go out wide. He'll make a late run into the box to get on the end of a cutback. And from here, you've really got to focus on technique and control. And De Bruyne is probably one of the best in the business at it. As the ball comes back and across to him, 
He finishes with control and accuracy. And the only way that he can do that is make sure that he focuses on his body weight being forward and his point of contact with the ball on his foot. But it's all about focus. Kevin De Bruyne is one of the best technical players in Premier League history. He's one of the most successful players as well. And Manchester City are lucky to have him. But there's lots of things that we can learn technically from his game.